So this is a demo of my CS6610 project uh, implemented scalable ambient occlusion by McGuire et al., which was at HPG in 2012. And um, here we are in Crytek Sponza. So let's check it out. So uh, we can view just the ambient occlusion texture. Uh, and we see kind of the the values being used to to shadow these corners and such around here. Uh, also, we apply like a Gaussian blur, so we can turn it off, uh, and you see kind of the underlying noisy ambient occlusion values that get computed. Uh, we can compare against uh, no ambient occlusion, so this would be just uh, just the ambient lighting, and you can see this this area and like the curtains. Uh, so if we turn ambient occlusion back on, now we get these nice dark spots here in the uh, crevices, kind of around the corners here, in the cracks, uh, and a very subtle shadowing around here, kind of up in these corners, uh, pretty much all over the place. Uh, so we've also integrated MGUI, and we can kind of tweak some of the parameters. So we'll go zoom in on the lion head here. Take a look at some of this. So you can change uh, the number of samples. I think for desktop they recommend maybe between 10 and 20. And maybe bump up this turns a bit. Uh, so turns is kind of how many how many times around this hemisphere you go sampling. Uh, let's maybe pick 11. What's interesting is that. Uh, if you if you have it as a multiple of this of your number of samples, you get a very high correlation between your sampling, and so you get uh, a much worse noise than you would if if there was not any correlation. You see, it's like incredible difference uh, just just due to that correlation in your sampling rate. Uh, it can also change the ball radius. So this is kind of the the size of the hemisphere that we're sampling over. I can see kind of as we as we go higher, the the effect kind of gets a little softer. Just um, it's, it's sort of like increasing the blurring, but kind of not. It's it's um, you know it, we're we're kind of averaging over like a a larger area. I, I guess is maybe kind of the way to think about it. Um, sort of. Uh, sigma kind of controls the strength of the effect, so you can see if we, if we bring it up, we get uh, a darker, darker shadowing in here. Uh, and kappa is kind of the uh, the contrast of the effect, so how sharply it changes to dark from light. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between sigma and kappa, but yeah, I guess with the blur on, it's hard to tell, but but with the blur off, you can kind of see it, it hmm, increases the contrast. So so your your effect gets darker faster, whereas this kind of increases the darkness of the the effect itself, but doesn't actually make kind of these fringes get darker faster. You can see now this kind of had, brings the darkness out a lot. Uh, but here we're just kind of darkening our effect. Uh, so you can also play with the filter parameters. So if we turn back on the blur, uh, this filter scale is uh, a multiplier on the radius that you're sampling over. So if you're, if you, it's like if if you have a radius of two and your scale is two, you're actually going to sample out pixel like four away from you and then two away from you. Uh, so three will push this out even further. And you can see actually as you push things out, you can kind of start to see these artifacts, uh, and this, this kind of banding appear as you're sampling very far away, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can also play with the sharpness of the effect, the edge sharpness. So actually there's a better spot to see how that affects things. So the edge sharpness is used to kind of discriminate between blending this this chain, the blurring of this chain, uh, to avoid blending it with the leaf, 
students even drop the edge sharpness, the, they start to blend together. You can see now the the chain gets blend, the chain gets blended in with the leaf, uh, which is kind of not what you would want. The the edge sharpness is kind of this thresholding on um, how what what the depth difference would be between objects that we're willing to blend together. Uh, you can see kind of these this leaf that's sticking out gets gets merged with the stuff behind it, and then eventually it all is just kind of a mess. Uh, similar things happen back here on the lion head. The nose eventually gets blurred completely with the rest of the head, and then if we increase our edge sharpness, we have some more discrimination between uh, you know the the nose and like the back area in between this stuff here. Uh, so I guess now I'll just do a little fly through and show off the effect that. Uh, the, the motion is a little stuttery because I use the mouse wheel to zoom in instead of having set up uh, some proper keyboard controls. But yeah, uh, it also normally runs at a higher frame rate, I think kind of around 50 to 60 ish at 1080p, which is pretty nice. Um, but the capture kind of hurts the effect a bit. Uh, and also just kind of toggle the ambient occlusion on and off as we go. You can see kind of under these archways it has a pretty nice effect. Uh, and on nice geometry, kind of like the line, you get a nice amount of shadowing. And this is, uh, again, the underlying ambient occlusion texture that's being used to modulate the ambient light term. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.